When you are at Arsenal, everybody wants to beat you, even if you're not double winners. So we know if, if we are at our best, we can beat everybody. So let's just uh, be concerned by our way of play and not too much about other, what other people think about us. Hello and welcome to Double Bypass. Over the next 90 minutes, we'll guide you through the highs and lows of Arsenal's defence of the double. We've got goals galore, all 84 of them, from the Gunners League and Cup campaigns. There's a new kid on the block. We catch up with Kanu. Out with the old, in with the new, as we reveal the new shirt sponsors. And you have the chance to win with Sega in our competition. The boss gives us a personal insight into the pain and the glory of a dramatic season. But first, let's take you back. After a summer of World Cup football, attentions were turned to the rigours of pre-season training and the defence of the double. We're going to try and win everything again this year. We've got four possible trophies to win. I think, realistically, you have to have priorities. You know, it's, it's difficult to win all four. Um, but you can't say, right, we're going to go for that one. This game, today, we're not going to try. We've got an experienced squad now, as well as um, from from a domestic point of view. But we've got international players uh, from other countries, and they, they'll have to learn how to cope with it. We've been Premiership champions, and you know it's it's an interesting season to see how we cope with it. One departure was Ian Wright. Ian Wright is the best goal scorer I've ever played with. I've played with a lot of people in the last 15 years. Wright. We always score goals. Is it? Fantastic goal scorer and uh, a lovely man. He was wonderful in the dressing room. Uh, such a, you know, when you come into work, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him dearly. Ian Wright had gone, but there were two new arrivals over the summer. David Grondin is a young prospect from France. He's 18 years old. He can be a good left back in the future. He can learn a lot from Nigel Winterburn. But of course, one day he has to take uh, to show that he's able to take over and. Uh, but before he has to work a lot. The first was a young Frenchman to add some youth to an experienced defence. The second, a talented Argentinian international. Vivas is a multifunctional player. He can play right back, left back, central defender. He can play in midfield and I think as well that uh, on the right sided position we needed somebody even in midfield or central midfield if something happens. With the addition of Vivas and Grandin, confidence was high going into the charity shield. Now Parla. Vieira. Oh, and Elka setting off. Bergkamp going for the same ball. Bergkamp's back heel. And Elka's in there. Oh, the Mars is there! Well, the man who scored in the FA Cup final scores again in the charity shield. It's Christopher Ray. Schmeichel's stopped it and hasn't stopped the second one. Ray makes it 2 0. Anelka against Yapstab. Still Anelka, 3 0. Well, he had the speed, and in the end, he had the strength. The charity shield goes to last season's double winners, Arsenal. Adams. Vieira looking long, Anelka making that pass possible. Lovely work by Nicholas Anelka. And Nottingham Forest lucky to survive that. He took it down. He took on Hjelda and hit the post. So Bergkamp with a free kick. Adams against the bar, Petit! The first goal of the new Premiership season for Arsenal. It nearly came for Tony Adams. It did come for Manu Petit. Ramming in the rebound. Thomas, he's still going. He's equalised. Rogers. 
Well, it's progressive play by Nottingham Forest, but they've left some space here, and space that Mark Overmars can use maybe to the full. Off Besant, Overmars! A lightning break. And Arsenal have regained the lead. A trip to Anfield for the first away game was a disappointing affair. Chances were few and far between, the best falling to Arsenal's Ray Parler. At Highbury the following week, it was Premiership new boys Charlton holding the Gunners at bay. After a gruelling summer, it was a slow start to the season with just the one win at home to Forest. I expected a difficult period for two different reasons. The first one was, of course, after the double. It's always difficult to get straight away the same concentration, the same hunger back, and to make the team realise that uh, it will be very hard. A frustrating tie against London rivals Chelsea saw David Seaman pull off a spectacular save. Late in the game, Dennis Bergkamp almost stole the points for the North Londoners. Here's Parler. Plenty of players forward for Arsenal here. Bergkamp just holding his position to stay onside. Bergkamp! Well, it wasn't the greatest angle in the end. It's a corner. Heskey. Able to turn and take on Steve Bold. He's given him a bit of space. Too much space! Well, that's a cracking goal. Time running out for Arsenal. Hughes. Worth a try, certainly worth a try. Well, in the nick of time, Arsenal end their run of three games without a goal. Stephen Hughes, 1-1. Although not new to European football, this was Arsenal's first experience at the Champions League. They were drawn in Group E, and before setting off for France, the boss talked of the dangers that lay ahead. I would say Dynamo Kiev is a very dangerous team. The most dangerous team of the group, and uh, Panathinaikos, Lens and ourselves, are, have, everybody has the same chances. The first port of call was away to Lance. A welcome sight was the arrival of Dennis Bergkamp, who would not feature in any of the other away games. There were injury worries at training the night before the game, as first Ray Parler faced a late fitness test. And then Emmanuel Petit limped off with a foot injury. The fans, however, were in confident mood. Our season starts today, I think. This is the main thing we've been waiting for. You know, you work a year to get in to win the league, and this is the one. I think they're doing really well. No, they will. They're hard to beat Arsenal, and you need that in the Champions Quite League. From this group, don't we? That's right. I mean, you, at the end of the day, Arsenal will not concede a goal. It's the only thing we haven't got in the trophy cabinet, so we should get it. Put the record straight. The ultimate trophy to win. Hello, Fred. Hello. Hello. I speak Hello. English. How are you? Hello. 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 Johnny Jensen! Johnny Jensen! Well, it does seem fitting that Arsenal should start their Champions League campaign here in France, the country, of course, of Arsene Wenger. 
Petit. Oh, and he's put over Mars in. That's a lovely goal, certainly worthy of this uh, illustrious competition. Over Mars. Sikara with the free kick off the bar. Moreira. And a good header there by Adams. Overmars just having a look to see what's on in the centre. He'll have spotted Anelka and Bergkamp, but he goes his own way. And nearly scores again. Our goal! In the second minute of stoppage time, Barre claims it. Keown was in there as well. It's 1 1. Disappointed at the end, you know, to lose a late goal and uh, to be on top so long and creating so many chances was just, you know, a bit, a bit disappointed. I suppose, you know, um, in the cold light of day, we'll look down and say that look back, this is a good performance. Uh, we've come away with a point and, uh, you know, really at times embarrassed at what is a very good French side. So, you know, that, that'll be what we look at. But uh, now, while well, the wounds are still fresh, we, we really feel that we should have won the match. Frederick Ljungberg is, a, I think, a talented uh, player. A midfielder is creative, can uh, make runs with the ball, off the ball, and I thought that uh, he could play right, left, and as well behind the strikers. That's why I brought him in. I think it's a very good uh, club, and uh, yeah, I was happy to be able to play here. I'm proud of playing for Arsenal, and that's the way it is. Hughes with the free kick. It's Adams! Well, Arsenal have the lead that they thoroughly deserved with all the early pressure. And now a goal to show for it from Tony Adams. Beckham. Space for the shot. Oh, the inside of the post and it stayed out. Blomqvist. Now Roy Key. to win it back well. Over Mars, one for Anelka to chase. Stan wanted offside, not given. Schmeichel makes the save. Anelka! 2-0! Well, Nicholas Anelka has been telling his teammates that he owes them a goal. And here it is against Manchester United. Overmars coming more across the pitch. He's found Parler. Overmars again. Oh, Hughes! I don't know whether he's looking for Jungberg, but he's found him. What a way to start an Arsenal career. Frederick Jungberg on as a substitute for his debut in the English game, and he scores against Manchester United. It was a great game, maybe the first time again uh, after the beginning of the season where we had a good win and uh, where we were really dominating. The 26th of September at Hillsborough will be remembered by most for Paolo Di Canio's push on referee Paul Alcock. However, for Gunners fans, it'll be for the team's first loss of the season. Kevin Pressman was in superb form for Wednesday. Whilst at the other end, Lee Briscoe's late goal proved decisive. Despite the resounding win against United, it was still a disappointing month for the Gunners, finishing a lowly 10th position. Back to the Champions League, and to accommodate its huge support, Arsenal took the unprecedented step of staging their Champions League matches at Wembley. The fans were not disappointed, as they turned out in their thousands, filling Wembley to capacity. Both sides enjoying the wide open spaces of Wembley. This is Lagonikakis. Keown, goalkeeper's lost it. Vieira, Adams, bangs it in. Well, it's a goalkeeping error. And Tony Adams takes full advantage. 
The pushing and shoving in the centre. But Keown's got that. Another corner from Petit, another goal for Arsenal. And Martin Keown fire the inside of the post. Hasanovic with the free kick. And a goal for Mauro, for Panathinaikos. Petit with the corner. And Adams. And Shea given just about kept it out. Anelka. Arsenal are in full cry here. And Burkamp. Well, a goal greeted by Dennis Burkamp, I think, with relief as much as joy. There's no flag. There is Burkamp. And Anelka, 2-0. Well, Bergkamp could have taken this chance himself, but he saw his colleague better placed. Petit. It's through for Mark Overmars. Brought down by Davizas. He'll be off for that. It's Bergkamp. Goalkeeper went the right way, but the penalty was perfectly placed. Two here for Dennis Bergkamp, and it's 3-0 to Arsenal. Over Mars. Newcastle really with no answer. And down goes Bergkamp again, he's put the ball in the net. But the whistle's gone. Bergkamp again, and this time Given saves it. Same side, but not the same result. Overmars, lovely change of direction. Oh, and very spectacularly stopped by Paul Jones. Bergkamp, and Nalka. Well, he takes some stopping, and Southampton couldn't find anyone to stop him. Chase that, says Bergkamp. He got the better of Lundekvam, and then angled it across the goalkeeper. Letizia, and it's David Howells on the burst! And Lee Dixon on a run here oh that's a brilliant early cross Bergkamp puts the header away but Dixon delivered it delightfully for him well the free kick has been given and now Arsenal have got to defend it crowd calling for the final whistle at Wembley Rebroff he looks round but it's given the Champions League starts then and, and you need to get the points and I felt we were a bit unlucky in a few games to um, to get a to get a goal against in the last few minutes. Two or three times that happened. Kenna. Oh Billy McKinley closed down by Vieira. Here's an Elka. Off the inside of the post and into the back of the Blackburn net. They'll feel that they've given this goal away, the home side. It's Petit, deflected, two. The wall started to break, and in it went. Sutton, deflected. It's a good reach by David Seaman. Petit, Johnson! Well, the youngster has found a header here to give Blackburn hope. Vieira. 
Oh, it's stylish play by Arsenal. It's Anelka. And the goalkeeper just got a touch, and that was crucial. Well, Christopher Ray holding it up. And the shot by Hughes, claiming a corner. Oh, it's an own goal. Lee Carslett. from Argentina, who's a versatile character, shows that he can score a goal as well as his defensive attributes. Good header. Off his corner. Oh, against the post from Powell. And in from Sturridge. Well, maybe Arsenal can break here. Overmars covering a lot of ground. And it's a tap-in for Anelka. He gets the credit for the goal, but it's very much made by Mark Overmars. A run from just outside his own penalty area. Always having a look for the pass, but he goes for the shot. But Anelka on hand anyway. Coventry nil, Arsenal won. Oh, it's cleared off the line by Winterburn. Three wins in October put the Gunners' season back on track as they climbed up to third spot. The team were without the services of Bergkamp, Anelka and Overmars for their toughest challenge yet on a damp and dismal night in Kiev. Kiev were three up before Stephen Hughes restored some pride with a late goal. Oh, that's very cleverly done by Patrick Vieira. Parlak using the pace on the pass. It's Anelka. Whoa! Has he scored a better one than that for Arsenal? A sign of his current confidence. A goal in the Premiership for the fifth game in a row. And what a goal from Nicolas Anelka. Unsworth. Petit, Jungberg, and Elka on the move again, not quite this time. Oh, and Overmars uh, almost lost it to Duncan Ferguson, who tackles back and can't dispossess Parler. And Elka, it's over the top. Corner in towards the near post area where Petit was a uh, arriving powerfully. And so close for Vieira. It was a young side that took on Chelsea in the fourth round of the Worthington Cup. Unfortunately, it was a record defeat at Highbury, the Gunners losing 5-0. Vieira, Paul, Petit, possibilities here for Arsenal. And Petit will give some work there for Espen Bordson, and Arsenal have a corner. Retrieving done by Overmars. Anderson trying to stop Overmars uh, getting into a shooting position, and Bordson is there again. Petit. Jungberg. Well, the catalogue of saves mounting for the young Norwegian goalkeeper. Parler. Arsenal still searching for the breakthrough. Dixon. Oh, 
and, uh, and Nelka hit that wonderfully. George Graham side still standing firm against Arsenal. Over Mars, that might change here because Adams is there. And again, Espen Bordson keeps Arsenal at bay. At Selhurst Park, Arsenal took on the crazy gang. A late contested goal by Efen Okoku consigned the team to their second league defeat of the season. Overmars still going and the goalkeeper did very well to deal with that from Ray Parler. That's good play by Schmitzer and a goal from De Berg. We have to uh, try to win the next game and that's it. Of course we cannot qualify anymore I think but uh, that's uh, there are still points to take and uh, we have now to concentrate on the championship and try to fight back. That's going. Looking as though he might enjoy the Highbury stage this afternoon. Here's Townsend. And Dean Gordon is onside. And Brian Dean scores for Middlesbrough. Vivas. Parler decides to go wide. Jungberg. Oh, well stopped by Schwarzer. Middlesbrough continuing to defend here with great determination. But here's an Elka. And off the underside of the bar and in. It's come late. But it has come for Nicholas Anelka and Arsenal. It was a bad month all round as the team crashed out of the Worthington Cup and another late goal conceded in the Champions League meant all hopes of qualifying were ended. Well, overall, I think it was a poor start. With, uh, physically and mentally, I wasn't at my top. And uh, yeah, after that, it, it started growing and I feel towards the end of the season that uh, I reached uh, quite a good level again. first opponents in December were Derby County. Ray Parler came closest for Arsenal, whilst David Seaman was forced to turn a last for Heenan cross over the bar. Who's going to take responsibility in this young Arsenal side for this free kick? Mendes. Well, it's a big deflection off Asanovic. But Arsenal celebrate a goal here in Greece. Steve Bold, and they've got the better of him. Sipniewski has equalised. Here's Anelka. Others coming up in support. And Anelka using the space, and he's rolled it in. Found the route round the outside. Arsenal back in front. And just knocked away from Anelka, but Boa Morte is quickly on the scene. He's got a chance here, he scored! And what a night this is turning out to be for this inexperienced Arsenal side. They lead 3-1. We were without 13 players, I think, and we expected, of course, I expected a decent uh, loss, and finally we won the game. It was amazing, and uh, that was great for the kids as well, because uh, to win in such an important game away was amazing, and it was a great night for us. Anelka, Bergkamp anticipating the touch, and getting the benefit for that quick thinking. He just gambled 
that Anelka would be able to ease it on. He got half a yard on the defenders by doing that and steered the shot across the goalkeeper. Bergkamp. Rodemeyer's just moving away from Anelka, who checks back. Bergkamp. Anelka stayed on his feet. Oh, and Dennis Bergkamp back for Arsenal today. And back at his very best. Brilliant finish. Anelka picked out Bergkamp. It wasn't easy, but he tucked it away beautifully. Collymore's flick. Hendry. Joseph. One back for Aston Villa. Bold. Arsenal a bit sloppy here. Joseph. Double. Now, can Arsenal move out here? Miss kick by Ian Taylor. Well played by Parler. Bergkamp. On a hat-trick, remember. Anelka, Parler. And he's just dragged it past the far post. Ordinary. Well, they're quick and energetic, this young lead side. Galvanised by David O'Leary. He's getting something just a little bit extra out of them. But here's Petit, as Arsenal look to get something extra here. And with Bergkamp, well, they've got it. I think he miskicked it in. And completely fooled Nigel Martin. Petit. Nicely down for Arsenal. And on the burst is Patrick Vieira. Well, he doesn't get too many goals. But when he does, they're usually very special, and this certainly comes into that category. Here's Hasselbeck. Well, Keon's got a problem here. Oh, Hasselbeck! Arsenal have got a problem, it's 2 1. Really hung up by Petit. Rolled out by Martin. This is a lovely play by Leeds United. And it was Vivas who broke it up. And he looks to go forward for Arsenal. The game spread at the moment. Petit pointing where he wants the pass from Bergkamp. And Bergkamp spot on. Petit spot on. Arsenal confidence restored. The two goal cushion restored. It's 3 1. Lovely goal. West Ham's visit on Boxing Day was also Ian Wright's first game at Highbury since his departure. Over Mars. Oh, it's in! It didn't look the best of angles. But it carried sufficient power. Sinclair, but he's caught by Manu Petit. Arsenal making all the running here. Anelka. Oh, great stop by Shaka Hislop. Well, it's amazing that it's still only 1-0. Bergkamp. Petit's got round the back. Ray. Parler. His luck again. And well, the chance is coming thick and fast. Petit. Oh, and a good try by Luis Boamorte. Now, what can Charlton come up with here? Redford, unlucky. Robinson. Keith Jones. Robinson again. And 
Berenger having problems. Redfern in the thick of things. It's good play. And it's Ray Parler. Bergkamp. Now, how did he do that? Over Mars. Eddie Yards trying to give some depth to the defending others to make the challenges, but they don't get there. And Ray Parler is sent crashing inside the penalty area by Kinsella. Over Mars. Scores! Short approach to the ball. Successful penalty. It was a good Christmas run for the Arsenal. They picked up 10 out of 15 available points to leave them in a strong position going into the new year. On our last end of season video, Boring Boring Arsenal, we asked you who were the only four members of the current squad to have won three league titles with the Arsenal. The answer, of course, was Tony Adams, Steve Bold, Lee Dixon and Nigel Winterburn. Congratulations to Emma Bryant from Gwent. Emma will receive a replica Arsenal kit. Details of this year's competition follow later. Still to come, more Gunners goals. And we hit the FA Cup trail. We take time out with Kanu and hear about his miracles both on and off the pitch. And we follow the Arsenal ladies in their own pursuit of the double. Well, the holders finding it hard going here. Oh, and Nogan follows it up. It's Nogan again. 2 0 to Preston. Dixon's throw. Balmorte. Well, Arsenal starting to get to grips with the situation and their fans will feel not before time <laughs> Preston have got five in the wall Petit still leaves them hanging their heads it's 2-2 two -two. superb free kick Vieira. So many Arsenal players forward here. Balmorte. Caballero can't get there. Petit does. There's a Preston player down. The goal stands. And for the first time this evening at Deepdale, Arsenal are in front. Petit second with a touch of controversy. Balmorte. Caballero lets it run, and here's Overmars. Game over now. Luis Balmorte has been involved in a lot of the action for Arsenal tonight. Lovely change of direction by Overmars. Liverpool were the first visitors to Highbury in 99. In a tense encounter, this Mark Overmars shot was Arsenal's best chance. At the other end, Alex Manninger's save kept the Gunners in the game. Well, it's not exactly the playing surface that Arsenal are used to. Shot by Overmars. Oh, Keown! Martin Keown! Threatens to spoil Ron Atkinson's big day here at the city ground. He made this corner his and bounced it into the net. Van Hoydonk trying to clear a passage maybe for others. Against the post from Johnson, Van Hoydonk. 
And Manninger gratefully grasps it. Well, Arsenal working hard here to try and avoid the uh, embarrassment of what happened early on at Preston. And Overmars doing a lot of it on his own, all of it on his own. A solo goal for the Dutchman. Wolves rather backed off him, almost inviting him to shoot. Well, he accepted the invitation and said thank you very much. Arsenal still leading. Yet another FA Cup goal for Mark Overmars. Oh, Manning there was beaten to the punch by Havard Flo. Off the post. And Arsenal scrape it away. Remy Gard with the corner. Bergkamp, well, it was deflected. It's a goal for Arsenal, they're back in front. I believe he's a very talented uh, striker. And he couldn't, got, couldn't get through in France, uh, in Bordeaux, because he had two national players in front of him. And uh, I think still that he will be a very good striker. He was unlucky here because he just couldn't score. And Diawara. And uh, Radebe. Kanu is there. Diawara off the line. Three to the corner. Plenty of bend on it. Diawara. Skimming the top of the crossbar. Also joining the squad in January was Nigerian international Kanu. At my school level, I was the captain and I used to play a lot. And but after my school, then uh, a professional side have to come and then uh, ask me to be with them in the youth level. <laughs> It's a dream for any young player who wants to get more experience, who wants to go further to go out from Nigeria. But it's difficult when you leave your family, your friends, you know. The weather is different, the food is different, the language is also different. We won three Dutch titles. We won the championship, the world championship, and uh, we won the FA. We went to Tokyo for the World Cup uh, for clubs and we won it also. So I win a lot of stuff with the uh, Ayers. It's my first time to be there. So um, I'm, um, I was the captain. So it's like we are going on and uh, training and we didn't know that we are going to win the Olympics. So. But when we beat Brazil at the semi finals, then we know we're going to make it. I signed from Ajax and um, after the Olympics, I have to go back to Inter to start my career. And then I play some few friendly matches with them. When the league is about to start, so I have to go to a physical a test. And then I went there and um, yeah, they found out something and then they say, um, I have a problem with my heart. I was like playing and playing and playing and not feeling anything. And then uh, they found out that stuff. So it's like they were saying it's over and all those stuff, and uh, which is not nice because yeah, this is what you love to do. So if they take it out from you, it's going to be difficult. But uh, I'm somebody who is religious, who believes in God. So I believe that. If God wants it to happen, if I pray also, God can also help me, so I get back to football. I was happy and I was playing some few matches, but due to the problem, you know, because if you have, if you got problem with the trainer, it's, it's finished because you're not going to get the chance again to perform. That's why I decided to go. When I heard that Asana was coming and then they want me to come and everything, uh, he accepted that because I was like telling him I want to go. I don't want to stay anymore. I'm tired. Yeah, so. Then I heard about that and um, 
I speak with the trainer, and um, yeah, he's like asking if I'm interested to come and all this. So, so yeah, why not? Kanu tells us all about his Highbury experiences later. Bergkamp taking that sweetly. Over Mars. And turned away by Ed Dachoui. Really is a vital game between these two London clubs. And Overmars going through the centre. And Bergkamp on the scene. Well, he finished the move with a typical touch of class. Chelsea complaining about that incident as to whether there would be a foul. But the goal stands. And Arsene Wenger celebrates. Zola. Petrescu just ran away from Babayaro. Arsenal needing all their defensive know-how here against a strong Chelsea response. Di Matteo and helped on its way by David Seaman. So Arsenal were unchanged in fourth, whilst arch rivals Manchester United went top. However, two good cup wins had seen the team through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. Once you get to January, when when you have a certain rhythm. Uh, every, everyone started to come, the whole team started to get back together and uh, uh, the injuries were gone and then we could start playing again and since then we, uh, yeah, we reached quite a good level. Bergkamp finding a bit of extra pace here and finding some room and finding a marvellous goal. Arsenal, like last season, really getting in the groove since the Christmas period. And they're one up here at Upton Park. Dix. Oh, plenty of... Players in yellow dashing forward in support of Ray Parler. One of whom is Overmars, Overmars again. 2-0 at the second attempt. Shaka Hislop a little unfortunate, having reacted well to the first effort. But Overmars put it past him the second time. A oh, deflection. And here's Pierce, and he's got the better of Tony Adams. That's better from West Ham. There's no flag. It's an Elka. It's still an Elka. Well, he's left two defenders in disarray and beaten the goalkeeper. And Arsenal now lead here at Upton Park by three goals to nil. Sinclair, great tackle by Winterberg. Sinclair trying to match that himself. Foe uh, tangling with Anelka, referee lets the game go on and Arsenal grateful for that. Oh, they're in again. It's Ray Parler. It's four. Next, the cup, and one of the most controversial games of the season. No Bold has made his way up. Whether Bergkamp can spot him looking into the sun, I'm not so sure. Well, he's found Patrick Vieira! And uh, Vieira's touch sufficient to give Arsenal the lead. Parler. Ray Parler there again. And Diawara. Close to a first Arsenal goal for him. Oh, it's fine play down that far touchline. Winterburn's pass. 
Overmars with the cross. And look at the room for Diawara. Well, Alan Kelly was beaten, but it hit the post. Marcelo! It's 1-1. One, one. Well, Kelly's kicked the ball out. And the Sheffield United fans still uh, appealing for that penalty. And Steve Bruce supervising the substitution. And, uh, well, Parler's thrown the ball forward. Sheffield United expected Arsenal to give the ball back to them. Instead, well, Overmars has scored from Kanu's pass. And the referee is pointing for the goal. First, we didn't want to cheat. And Kanu didn't want to cheat. He just didn't know why his, nobody was there. But Ray Parler wanted to give the ball back. So the best we can do now is to offer to replay the game here against Sheffield United. I'm thankful for Arsene Wenger and David Dean that they've acted so quickly um, and saying that yeah, they'll give us a replay. I think our players deserve a replay on it um, because I don't think they want to, they want in their good name of the huge Arsenal Football Club, what it stands for. I don't think they want to uh, win a cup tie like that. It's an accident. I saw, I, I saw the ball and then uh, I passed the ball and we scored. So for me, I didn't know. I didn't know that the man was injured. So I just saw the ball and then I passed the ball and it was a goal. So for me, it's a big mistake. For the first time in FA Cup history, a rematch was called for, and in 10 days' time, the two sides would meet again at Highbury. It really is a filthy night in Manchester. But the players putting on a very good show in the circumstances. A driving run from Roy Keane. Very well stopped by Seaman. Deep from Blomqvist. Oh, that's a penalty against Ray Parler. Here comes York. He's missed it. Parler. Carno. Oh, he's caught Stam out. And here's Anelka. Well, he scored it, but. Half the team have run to Kanu for the unpredictable turn, which led to Nicholas Anelka giving Arsenal the lead. Beckham. Philip Neville. Oh, Carl is free! Carl has scored! Bergkamp, Anelka setting off, dictating the pass from Bergkamp. Anelka will get there first, Anelka will score. With some ease against, it must be said, not too much Leicester City resistance. Elliot. Anelka, who's keeping going, and Bergkamp has slipped at Nicholas and Nelka through again. Same combination, same result, 2-0. Bergkamp. It's very much one-way traffic at Highbury. It's Ray Parler this time. Three. Well, Leicester City here in body, but it has to be said, not too much in spirit. Overmars, Anelka, the hat-trick's on, there it is! His first in Arsenal's colours. And it's all happened in the first half here today at Highbury. And Overmars put the third on a plate for Nicholas Anelka. Parler, he can keep going here and get his second, and it's Arsenal 5, 
Leicester City nil. Bergkamp. Vieira looking to get in on the act. Oh, so close to doing that. Bergkamp. Owen oh, Hughes. And appropriately, it's Mark Overmars, who figured prominently in the reasons why this match has been restaged tonight. But no complaints about this goal. Vieira joining the wall. Bergkamp, well kept out by Kelly. Overmars, that's a terrific pass for Parler, for Bergkamp, beautiful, beautiful goal for Arsenal. Clipped in by Dennis Bergkamp. Oh, good stop by Seaman from Marcelo. Still Sheffield United pushing forward. Oh, Seaman's lost it, Marcelo's there. Morris is there, it's 2-1, just as it was in the first game. That's nicely done by Harman. Solano, Shearer! Well, he didn't quite get there. Adams. Oh, that's a mistake by Howie to Bergkamp. And Anelka's away. And Anelka, in this sort of form, just doesn't miss. Poor defending by Newcastle. Dabby's ass taken out by the pass. Given totally exposed, Arsenal lead 1 0. Gets by it. Harman, who certainly can shoot, like that! Two big wins helped Arsenal move up to third as the race for the title stepped up a gear. Winterburn. Over Mars. Parler. Goalkeeper couldn't hold it. Now Vivas. Bergkamp. Carsley still with him. And Nelka against the post. Stimax turned it away. Parler's corner. Keown's in there, Adams is in there, Keown, Kano! In the last minute, heartbreak for Derby, but sheer joy for Kano and Arsenal. Time now to find out how Kano settled down at Highbury. Whenever I'm watching English fo football, I always like to watch Arsenal. It's not like I was then thinking I'm going to come to play with Arsenal. Canu was a gambler, but uh, I know him for a long time and I was behind Can after Canu for over a year. Okanu in stoppage time before half time. Whoever is sending me is not taking any gamble, but for them, yeah, they, maybe they, they're going to say like that because. Um, my head problem and um, I'm not playing a lot because I have some problems. When I came, I know they have good players and everything, but it's like uh, what I have in mind is to come and play, you know, just to show what I can do if I got the chance. Uh, my dream is like I have to got the chance to play. Kanu, Vieira and Kanu, that's definitely his.
when I came, I saw the players and uh, I started training with them. So I started getting used to them and the way they plan everything. So for me, I got the talent. It's only I have to train and uh, get back, uh, and everything worked well. Well, Paul has thrown the ball forward. Sheffield United expected Arsenal to give the ball back to them. Even with everything that happened, they were behind, they were shouting my name and everything. Stuff. So I'm very, very happy. They also encourage and give you the moral support to go on with what you're doing. So I don't know what happened or what they see in me, but uh, I'm very happy with them. Dixon, early cross. Oh, the flick from Kano, phenomenal. He's been an instant hit with the fans as well. He's a he's a legend already. It took me it took me 10, 11 years to win the fans over. He's done it in like two two weeks. But um, and he's a great lad as well. Great character and um, the lads love him. Kanu again, catching the eye. I'm here now. And I'm trying to adopt and everything is going fine. So I haven't seen anything bad. So yeah. I think my future is here. Yeah, so my next is I'm also still I'm still with the team. Except if anything is wrong, then yeah, somebody have to decide what to do. But right now everything is going fine, and I'm happy. Vieira. Now Kanu. For Bergkamp. Just given a bit of time to assess the situation here. Header by Diawara. Well kept out by Cernicek. Over Mars. And still able to go on and Cernicek adds to his list of impressive saves. That's a foul by Emerson uh, Tom. Quick free kick for Arsenal, too quick for Sheffield Wednesday, and it's led to the breakthrough from Dennis Bergkamp. Well, they've had to work so hard for this lead, Arsenal, and they are not sitting on it, they're looking to add to it. Over Mars, Kanu, they have added to it. And Kanu made it look so simple. Well, there could be another break on here. Overmark. Nil for so long. But now it's Arsenal 3, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Oh, it's an ambitious pass by Overmars, but it really paid off, and how? Ray Parler. The switch of the play, catching Everton out, and Ray Parler firing it in. Parler, Overmars. That's a trip by David Unsworth on Ray Parler, penalty. It's Bergkamp. It's 2-0. He aimed for the bottom corner, and he found it. Here's Unsworth. Oh, rattling the bar. Unlucky for Everton. Parler, who's been so impressive again. And that was Vivas. Adams. One from Winterburn. And here's Petit, chance for Arsenal. That's uh, held up against some pressure by Bergkamp. And Ray Parler. Well, he's been the man in the news this week. And he'll make another headline here.
Vieira. Bergkamp. And turned aside from uh, Jungberg by Hedman. That's a good kick by David Seaman. Sure underneath it for Coventry. Strong play by Kanu. Over Mars! Well, that's the second goal they've been looking for. And it should shore up the points here for Arsenal. Kanu the creator, Overmars the scorer. A great month then for Arsenal with maximum points from their league matches and the mouth-watering prospect of an FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United. Before we go on, a quick review of the season for the youths and reserves. We start the season very well, especially at Highbury. Then when, when we had to move out to Boreham Wood, we started to hit a few stumbling blocks. But all in all, it's been, um, it's been an educational year, really, because we've, we've chopped and changed the team as we've done in the past. But this year, it, we virtually ended up with the under-19 team playing uh, on a Saturday morning and then on a Monday with the reserves. So it's had its difficulties. A difficult season then for the reserves meant they finished ninth in the Avon Insurance Combination League. The under-19s finished second in the Academy League and in the playoffs beat Manchester City and then Sunderland before losing 2-1 to Everton. As winners of their section, the under-17s also progressed to the playoff stages. Having achieved two convincing wins, they went out 5-6 on penalties to Blackburn. A scrappy encounter at Southampton on Easter Saturday saw both teams come away with a point. Mark Hughes was unlucky not to score, the ball glancing off the post. Arsenal's best opportunity fell to Frederick Lundberg, his volley blocked by Ken Moncow. Well, Blackburn's need for the points as great as Arsenal's at the other end of the table. Bergkamp. Kept it, and he's found over Mars, Diawara! Parler's there, Bergkamp's there, against the wall, and then it flew past John Phelan. Well, he didn't give it up when his first shot was blocked, Dennis Bergkamp. If the right won't do, the left will, thank you very much. This is Parler. Quick, incisive Arsenal break. Oh, Kanu rather cleared the way for Bergkamp. Peacock trying to hold him at bay. Penalty! It's Bergkamp against Feilen. And the Australian wins the duel. Now the big two go head-to-head -head in the semi-final of the FA Cup. Vivas with the corner. Adams trying to connect with it. Oh, Bergkamp, well stopped by Peter Schmeichel. Beckham. Winterburn with the free kick. Well, it was uh, deflected the shot from Bergkamp, but it came up at a good height for Schmeichel. Bergkamp, Jungberg. That's a lovely pass for Jungberg, and he needed to take it first time. Keon Teller. David Beckham backing up the play here. Sharing it. For Beckham! Well, what a goal! Bergkamp. Now Anelka. Well, he got through and then the shot let him down. Now Parla. Such a stirring contest here at Villa Park in this FA Cup semi-final replay. Bergkamp. Goal for Arsenal! 
Well, you can never rule them out. Bergkamp shot off Stam and in. Chatee's corner. Adams is there. Keown's there. Anelka. Tala. Oh, penalty! Philip Neville on Ray Tala. David Ellery had no doubts. This for Wembley. Oh, Schmeichel saved it. Bergkamp cannot believe it. Well, ran off Gary Neville. Over Mars. Bergkamp. Schmeichel foils him again. Vieira, that's only as far as Giggs. Who's past Vieira. And taking on Keogh. And Dixon, Ryan Giggs! Can Arsenal find some FA Cup salvation here? The holders on the verge of going out at the semi-final stage. Every goal you concede, it, it hurts. Deeply. Because you already think we shouldn't have conceded that goal. I think every manager is that, is like that. And... Uh, even more so with our defenders, because you know we are so good. In a way, it was all in my hands as well, so uh, that was disappointing. But yeah, overall, I, I think when you look back on this season, it's, um, it would have been tremendous to, to, to win the double again. We got so close with the penalty, and then, you know, then Gigsy got a great goal, you know, but when you look back at it, it was, it was a great game. You know, the game before it, I know it was nil-nil, it was, <laughs> it's one of the best nil-nils you'll ever see. He gets it back. Over Mars. Taking on Jason Ewell and getting his cross in. And it runs all the way to Ray Parler. One nil to Arsenal. Winterberg. Really taking the fight to Wimbledon. Vieira! Well, whether Wimbledon were wondering whether he was going to pass or not, he saw the space, hit it hard and true, 2-0. Wide from Overmars, Bergkamp. Cano, goal! It came back off the post. And went in, I think, via a Wimbledon defender. Yes, Ben Thatcher. Oh, goodness knows what Arsenal had in their half-time cup of tea. They are storming forward in this second half. They're in again. They've scored again. Dennis Bergkamp. And Wimbledon simply cannot stop the flow towards their goal. Over Mars, Bergkamp, Canu, Vieira, and Canu! That's definitely his. Wimbledon overwhelmed at Highbury. Oh, one back. Carl Court with the header. Vieira. Onelka brought down by Steve Vickers. Penalty. It's over Mars. Well, not the best penalty you've ever seen, but it did the trick. Hit it low and straight down the middle. Vickers. Dean. And uh, came with surprising power. Gordon, he's lost out to Patrick Vieira. Anelka's away, chance for Arsenal, 2-0. It was Dean Gordon's mistake, Vieira seized upon it and slid it into Anelka, who slid it into the net. Gordon. 
Oh, so nearly made amends for that earlier error. Danu. Anelka. Okanu in stoppage time before half time. It is 3 0. Okanu. Vieira. If they play it right, Arsenal, they're in again here. Anelka. Over Mars. Is it four? It is. Patrick Vieira, number four. Middlesbrough not let off the hook. Arsenal rampant. Manelka, who's been involved in absolutely everything for Arsenal, back in the side today. Dixon. This is Parler. Dixon, early cross. Oh, the flick from Garno, phenomenal. Well, five against Wimbledon on Monday, and five again here at Middlesbrough. No sign with goal difference, perhaps important at the end of the season for Arsenal to ease up. And Nelka, it's six. Kanu has got two, and now Anelka has got two. Andy Townsend to take the free kick. Oh, and Armstrong off the post and in. Some consolation for Middlesbrough. Dreams of the double were over, but two classic performances and 11 goals had boosted the all-important goal difference and helped Arsenal to the top of the table. Of course, it's always the first two or three days are very difficult to pick up again and uh, to react, but we gave a great reaction against Wimbledon. And uh, since that game, we play very well, I think. Now it's time to find out how the Arsenal ladies fared this season. Well, we've um, had a similar uh, lot of success as to last season, really. We've done the Cup double, won the FA Cup and the League Cup. First up was the Women's Premier League Cup. The ladies coming back from 1-0 down. Marianne Spacey scoring the decisive third goal to claim the cup for Arsenal. Six weeks later, the ladies were battling for the FA Challenge Cup. Claire Wheatley sealed the game with a well-taken goal after Southampton had conceded an own goal. We've done a double-double, if you like, with the Cups, so we're, we're fairly pleased. All the girls, really, have worked well right the way through from the goalkeeper. They've worked really hard in training and reaped the, uh, the rewards at the end of the season, which we're really pleased about. We finished runners-up in the league um, purely because, well, not the only reason, but we lost a game against Tramay back in October, and that seems to have cost us quite a lot, but we seem to have thrown it away ourselves because we've had two goal leads over our main rivals, and um, we've let them come back and draw on those games, and it seems to have cost us because we've just lost the league by three points. At the end of April, Arsenal also announced a new shirt sponsor as JVC stepped down after an 18-year partnership with the club. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming and welcome to Arsenal. Um, now, we normally have press conferences to announce the signing of a new player. Well, we have a new player, but this time it's off the field. And a very major player too, Sega. I've outlived JVC, which is uh, it's quite remarkable. They were very good sponsors to us uh, the last uh, 18 years or whatever it was. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm still in there and uh, it's new times and uh, um, I think my little boy's going to be pleased. We thought that the fit was right with Sega, particularly because they appeal, their equipment, their games really go for the younger audience. That's the audience that we need to cultivate as well, our junior gunners. And in fact, junior supporters around the world, whether Arsenal supporters or other supporters, doesn't matter. Because that is, it's the youth of the day that are going to follow, ultimately, their teams. It's competition time. We've got a Sega Dreamcast console to give away to one lucky gooner. All you have to do is name the three Arsenal stars featured in our photo fit.
Send your entries to Chrysalis Television, Chrysalis Television Building, 46 to 52 Tantonville Road, London N19HF. Vieira made it his. Oh, and he really tried to bend that into the top corner. Dixon. Parler. Oh, good movement by Anelka. And the newly crowned PFA Young Player of the Year celebrates with an early goal here. One shot. Bohinen with the corner. Seaman grasps it and hurls it out for Overmars to chase. Arsenal still looking for the security of a second goal, and maybe this is it from Mark Overmars. The action may have been at White Hart Lane on the 5th of May, but back at Highbury, 13,600 Gooners came to watch their heroes on the big screen. Anelka. Bergkamp. Oh, it's a lovely ball. And Manu Petit. Bergkamp. Prized open the Tottenham defence and Petit looped it in beautifully. Bergkamp, who's passing the ball to such precision, it's two, it's Anelka. For both goals made by wonderful vision from Dennis Bergkamp. Arsenal's corner. Anelka! Well, he's headed against the bar. Not his strongest suit, Anelka, but he was unlucky that. It's Anderton. One back for Tottenham. Dominguez. Pass Dixon as well. Early cross. Everson. Vieira's free kick, looking for Cano. Oh, he's passed Young! Well, very few players would have even thought of doing this, let alone accomplishing it. Cano again, catching the eye. I believe that uh, they enjoy the, the way they play, and when you enjoy the way you play, you can uh, always... Uh, uh, concentrate on it and uh, forget the, the consequences of uh, the results and uh, that's why I think uh, what comes out from our game is uh, players are happy to play and when you're happy to play you forget about the pressure a little bit but of course they have as well a lot of experience when you see the players the number of games our defenders have played and uh, even some players like Burkham, Petit they have a lot of experience now so they can uh, live with it. I think you just got to take every game at one, one game at a time, you know, and uh, do your best. That's all you can do. You go out and give 100%, um, and that's all the manager wants you to do. And he knows that if we do that, and we've got the ability in the side to win the games. Anelka. Winterburn. Overmars going outside it. Winterburn has other ideas. Burkamp. And Batty. Typically, abrasively. Getting involved with Parler here. Anelka! Deeper corner. Vieira's there. And Keown, but it was Tony Adams, I think, who came closest to scoring. Over Mars. It's gone behind. Kiel. Keown. 
And they've got two in here, Leeds, Smith and Kewell, and it's Smith sent tumbling by Martin Keown. Ian Hart only recently has taken on the penalty duties for Leeds, here he comes. Off the bar, Hasselbank, and Seaman has saved it, it's still 0-0. Vieira, great play from him. And Nelka. And uh, Radebe. Kanu is there. Diawara off the line. Woodgate. Vivas with the corner. Plenty of bend on it. Diawara skimming the top of the crossbar. Kewell. Oh, Hasselbank is free! And Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank has done it to Arsenal again and may well have ended the championship challenge. So, despite the midweek games, it all came down to the last game of the season. The players are not nervous. I think um, a lot of us have been in this situation before and um, we try to let the fans uh, sort of be nervous for us, if you like. We've been successful again this year, you know, as in we got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. You know, and, and we're pushing really hard for the league. Um, and after last season, people didn't expect you to do that. But uh, the lads just take it, you know, as everyday life. You know, you see the youngsters here, and it's like water off a duck's back with them. You know, they don't seem to have any pressures at all. You know, so which you know, I'm sure is a good thing. If Man United wins on Sunday, we'll make 79 points. If we win on Sunday, we make 78 points. We won the league last year with 78 points. That means if we we maintain we win on Sunday, we'll make 156 points in two seasons. Considering the quality of the Premier League, it's remarkable. It was a day of mixed feelings for the fans at Highbury. Last season, I always felt we were going to do it because we had such a strong run. This season, it's been so up and down and so, you know, so tight all the way through that, you know, right up until now, I assume we're still on the last day of the season not knowing. So, you know, hard to say, really. Uh, in my heart, I say Arsenal, in my head, I don't know. I've never seen an Arsenal side playing football like the like football's been played this season. Uh, towards the end of last season, they were very, very good. This season, they've been totally excellent. And for them to finish runners up after playing the sort of football they have played this season, it, it'll be heartbreaking. If Manchester United drew with Spurs and Arsenal won, the trophy would remain at Highbury. Could Spurs help their North London rivals? Parla. Calderwood coming across with Anelka, who... Tries to take him on with a swift turn. Calderwood shrewd enough to buy himself and his team a bit of time. Petit. That's a lead Dixon well forward. And the shot by Vieira kept out by Michael Oakes. And it was Merson who touched it on. And then Anelka did likewise for Arsenal. Bergkamp over Mars. Vieira's in the centre, Overmars goes for goal himself, it comes off the legs of Oaks. Now Gareth Southgate's going back by the post as he did against Manchester United recently and he was in the right place to keep Bergkamp's free kick out. With the score at 0-0 at Highbury, drama was unfolding at Old Trafford. The Arsenal fans celebrated a Tottenham goal for the first time, thereby giving Arsenal hope that the title was still up for grabs. Bergkamp. Jungberg's there, oh, and the uh, eventual save by Michael Oates from Anelka. More Arsenal pressure. Kanu, and this time they have broken through. Hopes are still alive at Highbury. The Nigerian again. And who knows? Maybe again in the nick of time. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, as news filtered through from Old Trafford that United had won. The Highbury heroes took to the pitch one last time, and the applause was mutual. When you think that uh, we have done uh, 21 games, 16 uh, victories, 4 draws and 1 loss since December, it's amazing. But uh, Man United had a great season as well, that's why it wasn't good enough. 
So there it is, after 10 months and 38 league games, there was only a point to divide the top two teams in England. One of the targets uh, next season is to do well in Europe and in the Championship. We have improved compared to the beginning of last season and what we, the kind of football we play at the moment. I think the whole team has improved a lot. We have the best defence in Europe, don't forget that. We love to win and we are winners. Every other position when uh, top is uh, not good enough.